Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter and I am here with lesson number 22 on using the Arduino microcontroller and we have an exciting project for you today where we are going to be building from scratch our very own GPS tracker. Now I'll be honest with you, this is actually going to take two lessons, so we're going to do the first part today and the second part tomorrow. What we're going to do for today, what our goal for today is, is to get the GPS hooked up, to get the circuit hooked up and to have it streaming the data to us so that we're getting that position data coming off of the GPS module. Then tomorrow what we'll do is we'll finish up the program where we write the parsing program where we parse the data and store it in a useful format on an SD card. But for today, let's get this thing hooked up and let's get some good data coming off of it. We will be using the most excellent Adafruit Ultimate GPS Breakout version 3. Okay, uh, You can pick this up. Uh, you can pick this up for about $40 and uh, there's several reasons we use it. There's a lot of uh, these GPS units in this price range. The reason that we like the Adafruit one is that you probably know that myself and my uh, students do a lot of high altitude ballooning where we develop instrument packages and send them to the edge of space as you can see with the picture back here, send back data, send back pictures. The thing is most GPS stop working above 60,000 feet and they stop working because the GPS manufacturers misread the government regulations on uh, GPS equipment and they turn them off when they go above 60,000 feet. The thing about the Adafruit unit is they have correctly interpreted the government regulations which will allow you to have a GPS working above 60,000 feet on a slow moving object. The balloon is slow moving object and therefore it is perfectly legitimate to hook a uh, GPS up to it. And so the neat thing is is that this uh, Adafruit unit is one of the few <coughs> that really work at very high altitudes. I will say in some of our launches we have taken this little unit up to altitudes of 120 to 130,000 feet and have had it perform flawlessly at those very, very high altitudes. And so if you're thinking about doing high altitude ballooning, this is a great GPS unit as well as it's just, uh, it's pretty good for just any, just about any application. So that's why we chose this particular, uh, particular unit. Now, if we are going to do this, there's a little, use this, there's a little bookkeeping we need to take care of right off the bat. <coughs> Adafruit provides a very nice library to help do some of the, the hard work for you in developing software for this. So we need to start by downloading that. The easiest way to do that is to go to my website, www.toptech.com boy.com and when we go to that website you should look and find lesson number 22 build an Arduino GPS tracker if you come on you should find the link that says the Adafruit GPS library you click on the link by now I hope you know how to install these libraries on your own but if you don't I'll take you through it one more time step by step you need to get to where you can do this on your own what we want to do is we are at the library site on github what we do is we come down here and we want to download the zip file so we click on download zip if you are on google chrome as I am it shows up down here the zipped folder. If you are on a different browser, you will go have to hunt for this in your download folder. But for us, we can just click on it and it will open up the folder. It has opened the zip folder. The folder we want is the folder inside the zip folder. So don't just drag the zip folder to your desktop. You want to open the zip folder and then you want to get the folder inside the zip folder and drag that to your desktop. Okay, then once that is to your desktop, this is the library, we want to rename it. So we're going to come in and I am going to rename it uh, just like this, take that off, add a fruit, and where that dash is, you want an underscore, add a fruit, underscore GPS, like that. Okay, we need to put that in our library folder. Well, where is our library folder? This is the easiest way to find it, uh, and this should work no matter where you have it installed. You come to your little Arduino IDE, you come over here, and you look at Preferences under File, and then this shows you where your sketchbook is. And inside your sketchbook, you should 
see a library folder. Well, what I can do is I can come over here and let's just say I open up a folder. Uh, uh, like let, let me just open up any folder let me go to uh, my computer and then let's just sort of navigate there let's go back and look at this window and let's kind of navigate there so you can see that it's under users my name documents Arduino I could go sort of one by one on that let's just do it one by one let's go local disk I said should see something here that says users and then I should see something that has my name there it is and then I want Arduino okay or I want documents and so we come down to documents and my documents are synonymous and then there is the Arduino folder and boom there is the library folder we want to drop this inside that library folder okay let me show you another way to do it let me just go back to a computer I could get this and I could copy this controls to come up here to this bar and paste it and then if I go boom it takes me there as well so that's two different ways that you can do it and we now have the library loaded very important for you to be able to see that library you have to kill your IDE your integrated development environment and then you have to open up a fresh one okay because it's when you open up that fresh one right here all this business it's going out and it's looking for your libraries and so now if I look here under libraries there is my Adafruit GPS library so now the library is there that is a good deal okay that is very good now let's go ahead and let's hook let's hook this thing up so let me find where we uh, where we went here let's go back uh, to www.talktechboy.com we are on lesson 22 okay so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and just sort of see if we can hook this up now the interesting thing about this particular sensor is is that once you put power to it it starts streaming data okay and that's kind of like a good thing and you'll see in a minute it's a little bit of a bad thing it creates a challenge for us as soon as you turn it on it starts streaming data so let's see if we can get this thing hooked up the way you hook it up is you come over here and you should see a pin that says VN okay the VN pin on mine is over here almost to the left you hook VN to volts on the Arduino ground goes to ground okay and what we're gonna do to start with now just to sort of see if it's working what I want you to do is I want you to ignore what I say here okay and we're just gonna see if it's working so I want you to take the TX pin uh, the, the the RX pin I'm sorry the RX pin is next to ground and I want you to take the RX pin and I want you to hook it to pin zero okay the RX pin to pin 0 on the Arduino and then I want you to take the TX pin which is next to it and hook it to pin 1 on the Arduino okay so RX to 0 and R and TX to pin 1 alright and what that should do is that should just stream the data that's coming off the TXRX data off the GPS and it should just throw it on your serial port okay so let's see if that works so what we I need you to do is I need you to open up an integrated development environment like this that's just blank avoid setup with nothing in it avoid loop with nothing in it and then download that to your Arduino okay you get that downloaded and notice we haven't loaded any libraries we haven't done anything but just connect power and connect to those serial uh, those receive transmit pins and if I hit this and I need to set this back to 9600 which is probably where it's coming through uh, yeah so what I want you to see here is this is the data that is just streaming off of that uh, GPS module and what these are called is these are called NEMA NMEA sentences and these each line is one sentence and each line then has data about what your location is well I'm gonna stop this for a second so that you can see it and there's a couple of things that we ought to talk about here each line is one NEMA sentence and each NEMA sentence has various data that's very useful and informative to you it has things like what time it is 
What is your latitude? What is your longitude? What is your altitude? Do you have a fix? How many uh, satellites can you see? The quality of your fix? Velocity? All types of useful information. All right. Now, if you look at my NEMA sentences, what you see are a bunch of commas and a bunch of zeros. And that's because, because I'm sitting inside, I cannot get a fix because I've got a big roof over me. I'm not getting a fix. So it's just streaming empty NEMA sentences. But what this is saying is it's saying that the GPS is nominally working and it's talking to the Arduino and it's uh, streaming this data out. What I want you to see is, is that there's different types of NEMA sentences. I have the dollar GP. They all start with dollar GP, but I have dollar GP. And then I have the RMC sentence. And then after that, I have the GGA sentence. And then I have the RMC sentence. And I have the GCA sentence. I had programmed this up earlier to only show those two sentences. If you have just, just turned your GPS on for the first time, you probably see a whole bunch more than this. But what one of your goals is going to be is, is to just get it down to where it's only streaming these two sentences. Because for most applications, for high altitude ballooning, and for most applications that I can think of, all the data that you will ever need is in the GGA and the RMC sentences. And so what we'll be trying to do is to get it where it only sends those two sentences out. But the neat thing is, is that you can see without writing any code at all, this thing is already streaming data. And if I took this outside and set it with a clear view of the sky, you would start seeing data coming through here that, uh, that would uh, have position information and other neat and useful things like that. So this is the neat thing is that it just sits there and it just spews this data out. The problem is that it just sits there and spews the data out. So let's say that I write a program and I'm off doing something else. Well, while I'm off doing something else, it's spitting all this data at me. Then when I go to read the data off the serial monitor, the problem is, is that that data might be old because it might have been you know, data from 10 minutes ago that was the first data in, and then it filled up the, the serial port buffer. It filled up that buffer, and then who knows what's happening. I have either old data or corrupt data in that serial buffer. It's not, you would like it to be more of a client-server type of relationship where the Arduino could go out to the GPS and said, send me data, and then G GPS says, here's your data. And you ask, where's the data? And it says, here's your data. But no, the GPS does not listen. It's just sitting there just throwing data at us. And we've got to keep that in mind when we develop the software because I'll tell you, I've really struggled with this part. And in our high-altitude ballooning work, we found many times we were ending up with old or corrupt data in that serial buffer. And so we've got to make sure that we are mindful of the fact that this thing is constantly streaming data. And if we go away and do something else with the Arduino, like the Arduino goes away and reads pressure or something like that, comes back, tries to read that serial monitor, the data could be old, the data could be corrupt. We can fix that, but we've got to keep it, uh, we've got to keep that in mind as we're, as we're doing that. Okay, so that just shows that if I connect TX and RX to pin 0 and 1, which are, are sort of like just a little uh, direct path to your serial uh, to your serial port, I can just stream directly from the GPS into the serial port and I can display it. But we want to be able to program and we want to do a little bit better than that. And so we need to go out and we need to connect RX to pin 2 and TX to pin 3. Be sure to do this. So I'm coming over here and I have, I have uh, TX I'm going to put on pin 3. I've got to look very carefully. And then RX, I'm going to put on pin 2. All right. Just like it says here. So now what that's going to do is we're going to have to load a library called Software Serial. So we're going to create sort of a new serial port on pins 2 and 3. And we're going to be talking to them on this RXTX, uh, <coughs> RXTX protocol. <coughs> All right, so let's uh, let's start developing our code here. Let's get our code going. So open up a new window, and there's some things that we are going to need to do. First of all, we're going to have to load some libraries in here. There's several libraries we are going to have to include, which is how we load a library, and we need our add a fruit underscore GPS 
dot h. That is that library that we just installed. Okay, that is that library that we just installed. Okay, um, so let's say install the Adafruit GPS library. <coughs> now we are going to have to include and let's spell it right, include. And we need the software serial library. Software serial dot h. Ah, I better put a comment here. This is not going to be happy. Make it a comment. Okay. Load the uh, software serial library. Okay. Uh, what the software serial library does is it allows you to create kind of like a new serial port over here on these two pins so that, that you still use your normal serial port for normal things and you created another one over here to talk to the, to talk to the GPS. Now that we have loaded that, we need to create a software serial object. So we're going to say software serial. Okay. And let's call it my serial. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell it how we're talking to the GPS. Well, where do we want that software serial? Where do we want it to show up? We want it to show up at pins 3 and 2. Okay, 3 and 2. So this is telling, this is setting up that, that, that new serial port, and we're telling it that we've connected to the GPS on pins 3 and 2. Okay, so we're going to... Uh, uh, get that set up. This is init <coughs> initialize the software serial port. Okay, now what we want to do is actually create our GPS object. So we use the library name add a fruit <coughs> underscore GPS. Make sure that you're getting the underscores right. Make sure you're getting the capitalization right. And the way we do this is and my serial. So what I'm saying is, uh, and I need to give it a name here. Let me. Uh, so the library name is Add a Fruit GPS, and now my object name is going to be GPS, and I'm going to connect to it through, and I need to put an and my serial. Because remember, this is my serial port that I created to connect to this on pins 3 and 2. And so I've got to tell it that the GPS is connected through the my serial. And for some reason, these new uh, Adafruit libraries like to do this thing where you got to put an and in front of there. I don't understand it, but I know that the and needs to be there. OK, so what are we doing here? Create the GPS object. All right, so that looks good. So we have that little business taken care of. What variables are we going to need? Well, did I t show you that uh, I showed you where you want the GP GGA NEMA sentence and you want the GP RMC NEMA sentence? So when we go out, we want to grab two sentences. And then when we come back and read again, we want to grab two sentences. And so we need to keep track of two NEMA sentences. And really, we don't know whether it's going to read the GGA first or read the RMC first, we don't care. We're just going to have two variables, one for the first sentence, one for the second sentence. <coughs> so those are going to be string variables. And so we're going to have NMEA1. -E, uh, -M -M -E OK. Variable for, for first NEMA sentence. And then string n m e a two <coughs> very variable for second n m e a sentence. Okay, and then the way we read this, did you see how those things were coming in? That data was coming in. They're coming in as a, just characters. And so the way we read that is we just read a character over and over and over. We're just reading a character. So we need a variable to read that character into as it's streaming in. So we need a char, a character, and we'll just call it C to read characters com coming from the GPS. I think those are our variables.
In our void setup, we've got some business to take care of. We always want to start our serial ports. We're going to say serial.begin. And this is just our normal serial port that talks to the computer. So we'll do, well, we better go fast. We have no time to dilly dally with this thing. So we're going to go fast. Okay. Turn on serial monitor, and the baud rate is 115,200. We've got to now start the, the GPS. And so, just like we did serial begin, we got to do a GPS dot begin. Why is it GPS? Because that's what we named our object up here. And that we can talk to at 9600. I don't think it likes to go very much faster than that. Okay. Turn on GP, uh, GPS at 9600 baud. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is where it gets kind of confusing. One of the really frustrating things about the Adafruit uh, GPS is, is that it keeps wanting to send you the status of the antenna. Is there an antenna connected? And I don't care if there's an antenna connected because I don't have an external antenna. I know there's not one connected. And so when I'm out there trying to grab these sentences that are coming off of the GPS, all of a sudden it keeps spewing at me data about the antenna. And I don't care about the antenna, and then that messes me up when I'm trying to parse the data. All I want is the GGA sentence and the RMC sentence. I don't want you to send me an update on the antenna. So I have to force it because the commands that Adafruit says will turn that off don't work. Okay, so we've got to get down and dirty in this thing, and we have to do a GPS because that's what we named it up here, and then we've got to dot send a command. Okay, and the command we are going to send is dollar uppercase P G C M D comma. 33, comma, 0, star, 6, uppercase D, <coughs> in quotes. Okay, what this is doing is this is just sending a command down into the registers that turns that thing off, kind of like finally at the hardware level. Okay, turn off antenna update nuisance data okay so let's look at this again I'm gonna this one I know works so I'm gonna copy and paste it from over here and then I will read it to you again very carefully because you are typing this in it is dollars it's in quotes dollar sign uppercase P G C M D comma 33 comma 0 star 6 D and end it that will turn that off and your life will be so much easier if you are not getting that data in there. We need to do another send command. Okay, GPS dot send command. We need to tell it what speed we want it to work at. And that is going to be the command P M T K all uppercase underscore set underscore N A M A N E M A underscore update underscore 10 H Z. Close that and then a colon. Okay. Set up update rate to 10 hertz. Your other choice is you could change this 10 to a 5 for 5 hertz, or you could change it to a 1 for 1 hertz. And so those are kind of your choices. You can't put in any number you want. You can kind of make it 10, 5, or 1. So that's PMTK underscore set underscore N. And ooh, I have a typo here. N M E A. N M E A underscore update underscore 10 hertz. It gets easier here in a second, but this is just some bookkeeping that we've got to send these commands so that we get the GPS configured correctly. Now we're going to do GPS underscore send command. 
What we want to do now is we want to just tell it that we want two sentences. We want the GGA sentence and the RMC sentence. And it sends them over and over, but it'll send the, GA, the GGA RMC, GGA RMC, GGA RMC, but it won't put all those other sentences in there that we don't work. And so I am going to copy and paste this so that I do not make a mistake. And then I will read it to you carefully. <coughs> you want PMTK underscore set underscore NMEA underscore output underscore RMC GGA. So we're saying we want the RMC sentence and we want the GGA sentence. Okay. Request RMC and GGA sentences only. All right. Now let's give it a second to digest all this. So we will say delay by a thousand milliseconds just to give it a chance to get all this information in. All right. Now let's come down. We are actually getting pretty close here. This gets pretty easy. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write my own function and then I'm going to call it. And the function that I am going to call, it, or the function that I am going to make, is going to call read GPS. And what I'm going to do here in this loop, in my void loop, I'm just going to sit and read GPS, read GPS, read GPS. Okay. And so this is a function. So I have to define that function. So after the void loop is over, okay, this is the end of my void loop, <coughs> I will create a new type of function called void, and it's going to be read GPS. Okay, void means I'm not passing it any parameters in the parentheses. I'm not passing any parameters to it. I'm not getting any parameters back. I'm just going to do the steps in there. So void just means don't expect any data return from it. Okay, so now let's do the uh, <coughs> void re uh, read GPS. Well, what do I want to do? Okay, I want to come down here, and this is going to be just like our void loop and our void setup. We have a begin of the clause and we have an end of the clause with curly brackets, so this function starts with this and ends with this, and then everything in here it will do when I call this. So when it sees this command, it jumps down here and does these steps, and then it goes back. What I want to do is I want to sit and loop. Okay, I just want to sit and loop until I get a good NEMA sentence in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say while, I, exclamation means not, while I don't have, while it's not, okay, GPS dot new NMEA received, okay, and what you got to do here is be very careful of your capitalization. Uppercase GPS and then dot new and then uppercase NMEA. The R is uppercase received. And then an open and close and then a close for the while loop. And then open bracket for the while loop. And then close curly bracket for the while loop. All right, so what is this going to do? This is going to sit and loop until it gets a GPS.new NEMA received. When GPS.new NEMA received is true, it has a new NEMA sentence and it will drop out of this. But as long as you don't have a GPS.new NEMA received, it will sit here and loop. So it's going to sit here and loop until it gets a sentence. Well, what do we do in the loop? We read. So C is equal to GPS dot read open closed uh, colon all right so let's 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 think about this we call the GPS read we come down here and we loop and we just keep reading a character keep reading a character keep reading a character keep reading a character until this function GPS dot new NEMA received is true. And once it's true, it drops out of this while loop, meaning you have one of those sentences. Okay. So what we are doing here is loop until you have a good NEMA sentence. All right. <coughs> well, once you have a good NEMA sentence, once you have a good NEMA sentence, 
what do you want to do? You want to parse it. So you're going to say gps.parse. What do you parse? You parse that uh, you parse the GPS dot last NEMA. Parse that last good NEMA sentence. All right. So once it gets a sentence, where is that sentence? That sentence is in the, the function or the command GPS dot last NEMA. Okay, I take that GPS last NEMA and I parse it, which that means it's going to take all those useful things and put them in variables that will be easy for me to get to tomorrow. So we want to get the sentence and then we want to parse it. All right, get the sentence and then we want to parse it. Then once we have parsed it, we also sort of want to save it, right? We want to hang on to it because we know that we are going to want to use it later. So I'm going to call this nmea1 remember that was that string and then I'm going to make that equal to the variable gps dot last n n m e a and do I need oh yeah I gotta put the open close on this so right there you need the open close parentheses here you need to open and close parentheses. Okay, so I'm going to sit here and loop until I've read a good sentence. Then once I have a good sentence, I'm going to gps.parse that good sentence, and then I'm going to save that good sentence in the variable nnea. All right, so at this point, I should have one good sentence. <clears throat> this is the tricky thing, guys. This data is coming in so fast at us you cannot pause and do anything here. Whatever that first sentence is, you got to go read that other sentence because that GGA sentence and that RMC sentence come right after each other. And if you run off and check the temperature or check the time or get a cup of coffee or, or do any other command, that sentence is going to be in there and jammed up in your buffer before you know it. So we need to immediately read that next sentence. That's why we put it down here by itself. You have to read those two sentences right exactly together. You cannot even put a print statement here. If you put a print statement in the time that you do that print, you have already jammed up that, uh, that, that buffer and it's overflowed and it's corrupted. So the only way this works is if you read sentence one and read sentence two and don't do anything, not even a print statement in between them. So what do we want to do? We want to read that second sentence. So we're going to take this copy and we're going to do it again. Okay, only this time, so we have while we look, we're reading the second sentence and this time, okay, I've got it and now I'm going to parse it and this time I will call it two. All right, so now I've got the first sentence and now I've got the second sentence. All right, I got the two things I needed. I got my two sentences, I parsed them. Now I can relax. Now I can print them out. Okay, so what am I going to do? Serial dot print ln. I want to put M E A one. Okay, and then I'm going to put serial dot print ln. I'm going to put in M E A two. All right. So I'm going to grab the first half, grab the second one, and now that I have my two sentences, now I can casually print them and casually print them. But you can't do anything because of this stream of data. You've just got to read the two all together. All right. I think this should give us two NEMA sentences. Let's download this. Let's see where my errors Ah, What did I do here? Oh, up here, forgot my colon. Did you guys catch that when I did it? Forgot my semicolon at the end of that. Remember when you load libraries, you don't put com you don't put uh, semicolons when you load the libraries. Almost everywhere else you do. So let's give this an ooh read GPS. Okay, why does it not like that? Wait, read GPS. Uh, that is going to be uh, okay. So I'm reading the GPS. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to read the GPS. And uh, it says that that was not declared. Here I've got, I'm defining it. Let me look and see what could possibly be wrong here. Uh, read GPS. 
and then in my void loop, and then down here, <clears throat> I'm, de I'm defined. You guys probably see it already. Void. Oh, I don't. I don't want this. Okay, that colon because this is a function. I don't put the semicolon there. Okay. Uh, new Nemo received. Okay, let's see what I did wrong there. While not GPS new. Ah, little r. I'm sorry. On Nemo received little r. On Nemo received little r. Okay. All right, hopefully you're up with me. I'm sorry for those little snafus, but I think that we have got it now. Okay, so let's look at our serial monitor. We should see these NEMA sentences coming in. And we don't. Ah, 115,000 on the baud rate, remember? Let's see what happens there. Okay, I'm serial print line NEMA 1, serial print line NEMA 2. Uh, NEMA 2 is... Let's try to download it again. Okay, we're on 115,200. We've got that. Let's take a look here. So we are reading our GPS. Why are we not happy? Okay, I found the mistake. I hope you guys saw this when I went through it. The baud rate should be 9600 and I set it at 96,000. Let's download that. Whew, that was a hard one. But things have to work. If they don't, we've made a mistake. This should work this time. All right, I turn this on. Okay. And you can see that I'm getting these NEMA sentences streaming to me. I'm going to put an extra print statement in so I can see a little bit better. I want to see the one, two. I want to see the one, two punch, okay? So serial dot print ln. I'm having problems today spelling. Open, close. I'm just printing a blank line so I can see them one after the other coming in. And we download it. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, so let's look here. <coughs> I'm going to turn the auto scroll off. And let's look, look, the first data that I'm getting is corrupt, okay, because that's like I'm out doing all of this stuff, and then I go and I say read the serial port, and it's already jammed all this stuff in on me while I'm doing my setup, and then I try to read it, and I read garbage. Well, then I'm coming in and I'm getting a, an A and a C, an A and a C, an A and a C. It seems like it's working pretty good after the first one. So we might say, well, ignore the first one. Because as I'm coming down here, we're getting a lot of good data. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of AC, AC, so that looks good. The problem is if I just ignore it, the other thing is imagine all I'm doing here is reading GPS, but remember eventually we want a pressure sensor and a temperature sensor and an inertial measurement sensor. There's going to be a lot going on. And so I need to kind of simulate that other stuff going on. What if I put a delay of 250 milliseconds here that after I read the GPS, that leaves me, you know, let's say I'm going out and doing other sensors and stuff in that time. What happens if I put that delay to simulate those other sensors? So if it's just running flat out, the first data is corrupt. But what if I have a delay in there? What happens? 
Okay, that first data is corrupt, and then I get a CA, CA. <coughs> and it's looking surprisingly good with a 250 millisecond delay. <coughs> first one is still bad. And look, this one's bad too because I'm missing the chi. Things look pretty good at that point. But we got to kind of try a random delay time. So let's try 750 and see what happens. Because you don't know all the things that you might be doing between GPS reads. We got to make sure that this core part of our program is robust so that we can add to it. So that's bad. That's good. Good. I get a C and an A. But now look at this. I'm getting an A and an A and then a C, A, and an A, and an A. Well, this A and A won't work because I need to get both the M, C, and the G, A. So what it's doing is it's reading like an old A, and then while I was away in that 250 or 750 milliseconds, it misses the uh, RMC, and then when it comes back, there's another A there. So you can see this is not going to work. This is not going to work because while we're away, I jam up data in that buffer, and then it's old and it's corrupt data. <coughs> so how do we handle that? This is how we handle it. We need a new function. And down here in void read GPS, when we read the GPS, the first thing we should do is we should clear GPS. So we're going to create a new function. So when I tell it to read, the first thing I want to do is just go clear it. So now I need to define a new function, which is going to be void. And then this is going to be clear GPS. We're not returning any data. So it's that like that. Don't make that mistake again. Open curly bracket, close curly bracket. So here's the function. And what do I want to do here? How do I clear? So the thing is, while I'm out reading one of the other sensors, there's all this data that is jammed up in the buffer, and it's become old or corrupt. What do I want to do? Well, I just want to read it and discard it. So I want to do like two reads on the GPS. I just want to do two quick reads to get all that old and corrupt data out. And then I want to just go back and continue in my function to do the real reads. So what do we want to do? We want to do this right here. We just want to read and parse the sentence. I don't want to save it. I just want to read it for the purpose of getting it out of there. Okay. <clears throat> so here we are going to loop until, okay. And what's the purpose of this function? Clear old and corrupt data <clears throat> from serial <clears throat> port. Okay. And so I've read it once, and then I'm going to do it again because there maybe there could be, say, a couple of sentences worth of bad data there. So I'm just going to read it twice, throw the data away, and then I'm going to come back up here after I've cleared it, and then I'm going to grab the one I'm going to keep, and I'm going to grab the one I'm going to keep. And I think this should work. I think this should even work on the first one because we're going out and we're clearing that old data out of there. downloading anyway. Let's look. Oh, look at that. I got a C and an A. <clears throat> I got an A and a C, a C and an A, an A and a C. I don't care if they're in different orders, but look, I'm getting a complete A sentence and a complete C sentence. <coughs> a complete C, complete A. That is looking good. That is looking good. The first one was good. They were all good. How about let's go back and let's put like a short delay because you got you got to try because you don't know how long these things are going to be. That when you go do these other reads, it could be span a wide amount of time. So we've got to really try this for different delays to make sure that for any delay, that when you come back and want to do a good GPS, when you want to come back and do a GPS read, that you're going to get good data. So this is just with a very small delay. And look at that, I'm getting an AC, 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 look at that. That is working. Okay, let's go back to like 750, see how that works. You see, you're better off trying to break it now yourself than getting way into a project and then see that your algorithm is not very robust. But so far, this is looking good.
Okay, first sentence, a C and an A, that's good. An A and a C, a C and an A, an A and a C. <clears throat> I don't care if they're in different orders. I just need every time an A and a C. And look at that. I am getting an A and a C. That's going to work. Let me just put something crazy like a... Uh, 12,500, that should be like 12 seconds, <coughs> 12 and a half seconds. I just want to do that just to make sure that anything that we do is going gonna, is gonna to still have this core part of the program working. I got a good A, I got a good C. Wait 12 and a half seconds. Okay. Ooh, that one is a busted sentence. You see, that is a busted sentence. That one looks good. So for ultra long delays of like 10 or 12 sentences, I did get a busted sentence in there. So I'm going to, just to be safe, I'm going to read, you know, the question is I'm not sure how big that buffer is, and maybe there's enough room in there for three sentences. And so maybe instead of reading two sentences, I need to read three sentences here. So I'm going to take this copy, and in this void clear, I'm going to, I'm going to wait till I read three sentences and I'm going to throw it away and then I'm going to go get the data. <clears throat> and that certainly should clear out, clear out that serial port. I think this should work. Okay. Got an A and a C. It was the second one it missed up on last time. Twelve and a half seconds seems like an eternity when you're waiting. Ah, got a good one. Let's wait for one more. I'm pretty sure that the three has got to work. I think that this has just got to work. Got an A and a C, got an A and a C. <clears throat> got an A and a C. So that worked, but let's go back for the other ones just to make sure. Let's go to, uh, where were we? Uh, our delay is in right here. Let's go back to one second, one and a quarter second, see what happens. C and an A, A C, A C, A C. That is looking good. So this, I think if we do three reads, we just completely flush out that serial port and we are in good shape. Okay, let's go just 12. Let's just, just to try the other end and this will be the last thing that we try. C A A C C A A C C A A C C A. Look at that. And we're getting, I mean, that is coming in at a pretty good clip there. The data is coming in at a pretty good clip, and everything's good. So we went everything from like 12 seconds down to 12 milliseconds, and in that range, we got all good sentences, no busted, uh, no busted sentences. And so I think at this point, this is pretty robust. Now, again, we're not getting actual coordinate data in those sentences because we're inside. What we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to put an SD card on this and hook it up to a battery, and I'm going to go walk around outside, and we're going to collect real data. So uh, tune in tomorrow for lesson number 23, and on that one we'll complete the project to where you will have your very own handy-dandy portable GPS tracker. Again, Paul McWhorter, thanks for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel. Think about giving me a thumbs up. Talk to you guys later.